the 116th Congress begins its new term on January 3rd, there will be a record number of women, Native Americans, and veterans on Capitol Hill. And while there will be new faces, they'll be facing many of the same old issues, including immigration, health care, campaign finance reform. And with Democrats in control of the House, they say expect more oversight of the Trump administration. Joining me with a look ahead are analyst Michael Steele, a Republican, and Doug Thornell. He's a Democrat. It's nice to have you guys back. Good to be here. All right, nice let's here. begin with the big picture, 35,000-foot view. What do you think will be the biggest changes with Democrats now uh, in the majority in the House? Why don't we start with you, Doug? Well, there's going to be real oversight uh, of this administration. I, I think that, you know, under the Republican majority, they basically let a lot of uh, the malfeasance on the right on, in, within the administration go. Uh, I think we're going to have a, you know, uh, I think we're going to have a real solid look at what did happen in Russia. Uh, obviously, what happens after Mueller is going to be really important. Uh, but I think on kitchen table issues, and that's what Democrats ran on, and that's what they won on. They won on health care, they went on prescription drugs, they went on the economy. And I think that they're gonna, that's going to be really what they push, I think, over the first six months. So I think that you're going to see some things related to wages. I think you're going to see an effort to do something on infrastructure. I think you're going to see an effort to do an anti-corruption bill, which is, I think, the first bill that they've put out there. Does that sound like too much of an agenda? There is no Democratic agenda. There is opposition to President Trump. There, Democrats did not offer a real positive agenda on a number of specific issues. We have a narrow window before 2020 presidential campaigns consume everything. And I think if there is any legislating to be done, it's probably in the areas of infrastructure or immigration. But the oversight is really going to be, the investigations are really going to be the primary focus of the Democratic majority in the House. I think that's where the attention is, that's where the clicks are, that's where the money is, that's where the media is, and that's going to be the overwhelming uh, obsession of this, of this new Democratic majority. couldn't you argue, and voters who installed those Democrats, and many of them felt like, well, there's not a lot of oversight from Republicans for the president at this moment, okay, there should be oversight. What Absolutely. is going on with, the, you know, Russia? What is happening in Khashoggi? How is this debate happening in front of TV cameras and no one actually knows what's the happening? The checks and balances built into our system are there for a reason, and there is a place for very smart, very responsible oversight of the Trump administration. I worry that many of the Democrats that were elected in this cycle are going to overreach and get into places that, that may not be legitimate areas of oversight. A lot of the Democrats who did win won in, um, you know, swing districts or, or slightly red districts. They're more moderate. They did, they did run on an agenda talking about uh, kitchen table issues. So they, it, it, this, this idea that they are going to, that they are rushing in to just basically do oversight, most of the majority, the majority makers, the 40 Democrats who won those, those seats, they have, they're coming to Washington to try to get a lot of things done for their districts. Let's talk about Nancy Pelosi for a moment. Sure. Um, she emerged victorious, and the fact that she's doing photo ops with uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, who's very progressive, and also some of her more moderate members all at the same time is sort of a big giant win for Nancy Pelosi. What does that mean for the Democrats? Are they in this disarray where they don't agree on the very basics? Well, I think because Nancy Pelosi is positioned to be the Speaker of the House again, there's likely not going to be a lot of disarray. Mike and I were on the Hill at the same time. One thing that Nancy Pelosi does understand is how to run a caucus. Uh, she's also a prolific fundraiser, and she knows all the levers of power to pull in, in Congress. Look, this is an area of bipartisan agreement. Both Republicans and Democrats are thrilled that Nancy Pelosi will be the next Speaker of the House from the Republican side because she is a uniquely polarizing and unpopular congressional leader, and she will, as the face of the Democratic House, be a they political sure advantage work to hard to get rid of Nancy Pelosi for people who, for the GOP saying they really love having Nancy Pelosi. She is there were polls of, from Republicans. Like, do you think Nancy Pelosi <laughs> should, like, who's, why are we polling Republicans? She is uniquely unpopular as a congressional leader and polarizing, and that's a terrific political advantage to Republicans looking to take back the House in 2020. I don't know that I'm buying that. Well, I, I also think that. that Mitch McConnell is deeply unpopular. He's unpopular with the Republicans. Paul Ryan's unpopular. I think just members of Congress overall are unpopular. In Impeached or not? Trump? Yeah. Uh, I think articles of impeachment will be passed by the House of Representatives. He will not be convicted in the Senate. I think we're going to have to wait to see what the Mueller report says. But with uh, the news of Cohen, uh, with Michael Flynn, uh, if you're in the White House, this is not looking good. I don't, again, I don't think Democrats are going to move forward with impeachment unless there's you know solid evidence that Mr. Mueller puts forward. But doesn't look good for the White House right now. Michael Steele and Doug Thornell, nice to have you guys. Good to be with you. Thank, Thank you. you.